Hello and welcome. Mike Green here from Dental Technology Association. Uh, in another edition of us introducing different businesses that are in the technology development in the dental field. And today we're going to talk about referrals. Now referrals isn't really a new topic uh, for you or for me. Obviously referrals are the way the business is done and especially the dental business. Uh, but sometimes dentists forget about how important referrals are. and. Uh, the care that needs to be taken in referrals. And so I brought Dr. Rob, Dr. Rob Barrick uh, in today to talk number one about uh, how you can improve the referral system or put more energy and more focus on it in your practice, but also a mechanism that you can use uh, to basically streamline the system, make it more effective, make it more impactful, and frankly, uh, make it more uh, patient focused for you general dentists that are out there and uh, more financially viable for you specialists that are out there. So Dr. Rob, tell us a little bit about what you got going on. Okay, well thanks Mike. I, first of all, I, I really appreciate uh, DTA bringing me on to be able to share with you guys some thoughts about referrals. Um, referrals weren't a big deal to me. Uh, I've been in practice for about 14 years now and like a lot of, a lot of dentists we, and specialists, we take it for granted that, that referrals come to us both from patients and from specialists. And it wasn't until about four or five years ago I had a conversation um, with a specialist that it made a big deal to me and it changed the perception that I had of referrals and how important they are to our practice. Um, so we'll be talking today about referrals and I'll be introducing to you um, a really great software called Referral Web that a bunch of doctors got together and tried to solve this problem because uh, referrals are the lifeblood of every practice, whether or not you've just started a practice or whether or not you've been in for years. Uh, referrals are so important to keep things rolling and uh, unfortunately a lot of us don't realize that our referral system in the dental field is, is broken and our goal here in, in talking today is, is how to fix that, how uh, it can be controlled and how um, we can capture every referral that's sent to us and uh, the patients will love us for us, uh, will love you for, for doing that. So I like this uh, illustration because it helps show that just because you don't necessarily see that there's a problem doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And I'm going to be showing you, uh, explaining to you how there is a problem with the referral system and, you, and what's going on in your, in your practice right now. I was out to lunch about four or five years ago with a doctor, an orthodontist in our town, and uh, he said something that changed the way that I forever felt about referrals. I asked him about Johnny who had been sent to his office about a month earlier and his his response was you know he never showed up he never came in in fact I don't even have a clue who you're talking about and I'm really frustrated because it seems like every week I have another general dentist ask me about a patient that I don't even know exists and uh, it's just frustrating because I can't even reach out to these patients and ask them to come in and so I told him my frustrations that I was frustrated that I didn't know that Johnny didn't come in. I never get status updates on how patients are doing. Uh, I occasionally get something in the mail that gets thrown into a, a pile of, of uh, post-op uh, instructions from specialists, but we don't communicate well at all. And so we, we ended up going back and doing some research and finding out that, uh, this, well, this is the first study that I saw. And uh, a couple of things that I wanted to point out was that 37% of the patients that were referred never ended up making it in. And this was over 5,000 patients surveyed. And 45% uh, of referring doctors never heard back from the specialist uh, after they sent them away. The conclusion was a referral wherein the physicians involved do not communicate with one another results in physician dissatisfaction. And so that 37% that never followed through really struck uh, Dr. Webster and I. I mean, that's quite a bit, and that 37%, if they didn't even make it through the door, um, that specialist doesn't even have a clue, can't even reach out to them. Um, another study had 780 patients. Uh, they had a little bit better um, of patient compliance, but they went into the reasons why patients actually didn't make, make it in. And, and what was interesting was, uh, I thought that the number one reason why patients weren't going to the specialist was for a good reason, such as they, they just didn't have the money for it like for braces or whatever. But it turns out that uh, that's actually down the list. Number three, the first one is that they're just too busy and uh, they're just like all of us, we just uh, get going along in life and we forget. We put that little referral paper card on the, on the counter and we never get around to it. And they waited long enough that the problem ended up going away, which we all know as dentists, that it doesn't really go away. Um, but the last one there was, was money. 
So uh, their conclusion was that uh, referral completion awareness could be improved with electronic records that automatically update the patient's primary care records once a specialist appointment has occurred. And so it talks about an electronic referring system. Well, we got thinking and we put together uh, some ideas with all the things that we wanted in a, in a perfect refer referring platform and we created Referral Web. But before we get on to that, go on to that, I want to talk about how to improve referrals. So we're going to be talking about the value of each referral, um, how to increase referrals from patients, and how to increase referrals from doctors, and how to capture every referral that's sent your way. Because after all, you've worked really hard for these referrals. You've done everything right. You've asked them. You've given them treats and goodies, taken them golfing and whatever. And they, when they send a referral to you, you need to know that, that it exists, first of all, and it's, you need to be able to capture that referral that's sent to you. So the value of referrals is uh, how much money uh, you bring in from the referral minus how much it costs you to actually get that referral. And so um, it gives you the value. So let's go ahead and, and look at my, uh, my practice this last year. Um, I had about 135 referrals from different patients and other doctors. And the average I earned from them was about $1,300. It didn't cost me any money, uh, just building relationships. And so my value of, of referrals last year was $174,000. Let's look at the value of marketing. I'm a pretty heavy marketer. And uh, I only brought in 12 patients. Now, this is the different types of marketing I did was online marketing. Um, I spent about uh, $1,000 to $2,000 a, a month on pay-per-click trying to get them to my site for cosmetics as well as um, uh, phone book ads. And I also do this uh, marketing around town in restaurants uh, on, on their uh, digital signage there. Um, so total, I was spending about $2,250 a month. And... Uh, I only brought in 12 patients off of those. So I actually went in the whole $11,000. So when you look at these, the difference between referrals and uh, marketing, there's a huge difference there, obviously. Not only that, but the people that actually come in and see me from referrals are such better patients than the ones that are coming in because I am giving some sort of a discount or a special. And, the, and so the quality is a lot better. So we're gonna be talking about, first of all, patient to doctor referrals and also doctor to doctor referrals so with patient to doctor referrals um you know we, we like to have patients out there talking good about us and uh, they they end up it's a word of mouth and they tell they tell their friends about us and it usually takes multiple recommendations by multiple friends in order for that person to actually make a decision to come in and see you they the statistics are around seven you need around seven different uh, people telling you at different times before you actually decide hey i'm going to go visit dr rob so uh, 54 percent of all my new patients were were from referrals from patients so that was a big deal for me last year but the doctor to doctor referral system is even more important because it's not just a recommendation and it doesn't take multiple touches it takes it's it's like a gift it's a red hot lead and it's a specific directive from um, a doctor and it usually only takes one recommendation in order for that person to end up making it in now specialists um, especially have a great need for this 70 percent of their practice um, in general 70 percent of a specialist practice is made up of referrals from other doctors so in order to do this and, and be effective, you need to have a referral system that's effective. And why do we have systems? A systems that help establish protocol. They, it's like an engine that performs like clockwork. It has predictable results, and it decreases the time and energy and resources from busy doctors like us. So we're going to talk about a system for increasing referrals from patients. <clears throat> First of all, um, in order to be referable, you need to ask yourself, am I, be, am I referable? Um, being a good doctor is wonderful, but the problem with being a great doctor and, and, uh, is that patients expect you to be a great doctor. They expect all these things from you. They expect you to be on time, to be gentle, friendly, and fair with them. They expect those things, and they don't talk to their friends about people that they, about when they have things that are um, expected. Um, but when they, they talk, when something's exceptionally good, the care that they have is a lot better than just the normal good doctor. Or if they have exceptionally bad care, then they will talk about that. <clears throat> so if you're not on time, if you're not gentle or fair or friendly, they will let their friends know, do not go to this guy. But what, what uh, 
it makes an exceptionally good experience. Well, what's interesting is you're already doing all the, the really good things. You're already meeting with them and uh, being gentle, friendly, fair, and, and on time. It's the little things that make a huge difference. And so I'm going to go over a couple of things that I've learned just as examples. You probably have your own that you do that make a big difference. But sunglasses, they don't like the, the, the light in their eyes. And it's amazing how many of these patients are like, wow, these are great. I, I haven't had a, a doctor provide these for me before. Vaseline, we care that their lips aren't chapped. Um, we give them something to rest their bite on. Um, intraoral camera, showing them the actual filling uh, really big <clears throat> and, and trying to explain this to them in a way that they understand. A pillow for them to rest their neck. These are all things that are important. But the last one I think is a really good one, and that's follow-up call. It's really easy. What I do is I actually have my schedule printed out and put on my desk. And then every day uh, I go through and circle the ones from the day before that in particular, I want them to uh, have a phone call from my, my uh, receptionist up front, letting them know that Dr. Rob is thinking about them and wants to know how they're doing. And occasionally I'll call them myself if it was a big case. But I hear probably the most of my uh, uh, positive feedback from this as they refer other people. Uh, another thing is to show your work. It's important for people to be able to see the work that you've actually accomplished and what you do, and it helps them uh, decide to come in and, and see you or refer their friends to you. I actually have, I have these before and after pictures um, up in my, in my operatory here, and uh, while patients are waiting for me, they, they get to see these before and after pictures, which help them uh, you know, solidify in their mind the fact that I am a good cosmetic dentist and they do want to send their friends to me. Um, I have Dental Network TV actually create these before and after pictures for me and uh, they're really great. They, it's just a slideshow. It's pretty simple but it has a big impact. Um, using that on social media is huge because people like to see that. They like to see before and afters. It's, it, it's kind of just a fun thing that people naturally are drawn to see. Uh, to see, wow, that made a really big difference for this person. So, um, you know, Facebook or uh, Google Plus uh, is a great thing. So this, this brings me to the last thing. So you're doing all the right things. You're, you're above the grade. You're doing all the, the right things. And you have every reason to expect patients to refer to you, but they still aren't. Well, that's uh, because you aren't asking them to do it. It's amazing how important it is for people to um, get asked to do something in order for them to think about it the next time they run into a friend. Um, one way to do it is uh, you, can't, you can't really see the outline of this, but this is a postcard that I, that I actually have for post-op instructions. So every time that someone comes in and gets feelings done, I hand them this uh, four by five postcard that, that talk, tells them what to expect and to contact me if they have any problems. And it also gives them a contact information and ways for them to be able to look at my, uh, to look at my ref um, before and after pictures. On the back side of it, it's perfect because I hand them this card and tell them these are the post-op instructions. And if give me a call if you have any problems. As you'll notice on the back side, um, if you have anybody that you'd like to refer to me, uh, please use this uh, QR code or go to drrobreferral.com and, and it will, uh, you can put your information in there. And it allows me to let them know how much I appreciate and care for them and appreciate referrals. And just by handing this to them and asking them, it makes it really easy to ask. Sometimes it's hard to ask people for referrals just out of the blue. But when you actually have a card that has a purpose of the post-op instructions and it naturally goes over to uh, please refer your friends and family, there's nothing uncomfortable about it. And uh, <clears throat> this actually right here is one thing that Referral Web does offer. So instead of just getting an email, um, with their information. It actually goes through the whole process of the backbone of referral web and, and uh, lets you know instantly when a referral is made. And I'll go through that a little bit more when we go over referral web. But this is another thing. This is patient to doctor referrals through referral web. Um, referral web actually provides these cards for no cost for you. Um, uh, it's an unlimited referrals uh, <clears throat> when you sign up for this uh, patient to doctor referral form. So, okay, let's, so they do refer somebody to you. It's so important that you thank them for that because if you, if you appropriately thank them with either this dental credit or sending them to the movies, then they will be more likely, far more likely to continue to send more referrals to you. Usually I have um, one person send a referral, I thank them a lot, and they end up sending a bunch more to me. So you got to make sure that you're thanking the people. Uh, well, first of all, know who the people that are referring to you so that you can thank them. And that's the other thing that's nice about referral web. Even if somebody doesn't end up coming in to see you, but they were referred by one of your doctors, 
you I mean by one of your patients you can actually call up and thank that patient for referring these people even though they didn't come in which is so important to, to give them that thank you and and if you didn't have this uh, done by referral web you wouldn't have a clue that they were even referred to you <clears throat> okay so was there any questions from from you about any of this no, that's question? a really good <clears throat> introduction of the importance of referrals into really every practice and again I really like how you mentioned the little things and I think I think a lot of dentists go into it thinking that if they just do those core things right if they're gentle if they're friendly mm -hmm. um, you know that that's good enough but um, it's competitive out there and depending on where you are in the country um, you might be really really competing against some great dentists um, to, to get the patients and mm -hmm. so and from my perspective anything that you can do to get the edge or get the the next one up on the next guy um, to convince that patient uh, that you're the right you're the right dentist to go to I think is a great benefit and referrals again like I really like how you said it's the lifeblood you know if if you can get that figured out in your practice it seems like uh, you've really got some uh, some 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 great things in your favor to be successful. Um, I'm interested to hear about referral web and um, the actual structure of of how that facilitates that referral going back and forth. Again, because I, I would classify that again as is one of the little things, right? It's mm -hmm. the it's one of those little things that makes just a, a huge huge difference. Great. Well, uh, let's talk about it then. So we're going to be talking about increasing referrals from doctors. So let's just say an orthodontist. Um, so again, uh, the, some of the things I'm going to be going over is you need to be competent and skilled. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get someone to refer to you, another doctor to refer to you if they're better, as good or better than you as something. So as a cosmetic dentist, I need to stand out and I need to actually be competent. And part of that is by showing your work. Um, one thing that uh, I've done is actually pre presented this little booklet that shows my before and afters to all the other doctors. I just go by and just say, hey, listen, uh, take a look at some of my work. Uh, and it really helps them gain trust in what my abilities are. Uh, the other thing is lunch and learns. I actually switched endodontists who I referred to because of an endodontist that came and provided a lunch and learn for our, our uh, dental society. And it was, he was so informative, so good. It just uh, helped me gain trust in him and I knew he was competent and skilled so I, I switched over to him. Uh, the second thing that we're looking for is a meaningful relationship. So speaking as a general dentist, um, those people that take me out and take me golfing or send me lots of stuff, that's really good and I appreciate that. Um, but if we don't have that meaningful relationship, then, then, it doesn't, then it doesn't really count for much. And so usually you get relationships by taking the time and uh, feeling sincerity from those doctors. <clears throat> and also service is a big one. So how I, how I know someone really cares about me is like if I'm in a jam, and I really, I, I screwed up on uh, some sort of surgery and I, I send it down to this periodontist. Instead of, get a, instead of getting a lecture from him about how I really screwed up, he basically says, you know what, let me help you out. Let me do this for you and, and uh, help you through this process and fix this for you. And so that's service and, and that makes me have a better relationship and a more meaningful relationship with them. Obviously, we need to feel that you care about our patients, a specialist. A lot of times we feel like the specialist, because it's a one and done, they don't really take the time to really make sure that the patient's comfortable. And uh, a lot of times when they aren't scheduled promptly and it takes them a couple weeks to get in when they're in pain and they aren't getting taken care of, then, then uh, it ends up coming back to us and we find out. Now, I, I actually had an experience like this where I had a patient come into me and I've been sending to this oral surgeon for literally you know two years. Uh, mainly because he, I thought we had a meaningful relationship and he was competent and skilled <clears throat> and he would, he would frankly send me lots of gifts. And uh, anyway, this patient came in, I asked, I, I had never asked before really how, the, how it went. Uh, I just assumed it went well, but I asked her and, and she just broke down in tears and started crying just even thinking about their, her experience that she had so bad. And I, now I know everybody has bad experiences once in a while with all of us. But I, I started asking more and more and I found out that he wasn't really treating my patients with care. So that's something that's really important as you um, try to increase referrals from doctors. Um, I ended up leaving him and going to another oral surgeon because of it. Uh, the fourth thing is communicating effectively. Um, that comes with knowing what happens to our patients. The status updates of, yes, we received that, uh, that patient did come in and uh, let's share files to make sure that this patient gets the care that they need. Uh, ineffective communicate 
communication is one of the top reasons why general dentists end up leaving specialists. They just don't get communication, proper communication from the specialist. Um, top of their minds. So this is where a lot of the focus comes in from a lot of specialists is trying to be at the top of the mind of the doctor. And there's a place for that. I appreciate the gifts. I appreciate the things that, that uh, are done. Um, but, you know, education is, is uh, number one. If you guys provide us with education and helping us, that really, really helps. Um, and then the other one, you need to ask for those referrals. I remember being taken out by a, an orthodontist and well, we were, he took me out golfing. After it was over, he shook my hand and looked me in the eye and just said, uh, you know, straightforward, I appreciate the referrals you sent to me. And uh, I hope that you feel that I'm treating them well. And, and uh, will you continue to send referrals to me? I really appreciate it. And just his directness and asking for referrals meant a lot to me. And, uh, you know, frankly, I decided, you know what, this is the type of guy that I want to refer to. Now, after you've done all of this to get all these referrals, the last thing is you need to capture every referral that's sent to your office. If you really are losing 30 to 40 percent of those, um, it can add a uh, can add up and we will talk a little bit about that so the first thing and this brings us into referral web the first thing you need to recognize the problem a lot of specialists you know their chairs are full so they're not really realizing um, that that they have a problem with retaining or actually capturing the referrals that are sent so there is a problem and uh, the problem is with the way we actually send the referral and that's with paper referral forms which all of us are guilty of that's just the way it's been but times are changing and if you're if you're still using paper referral forms within a year or two um, you're going to be left in the dust 80 percent of all dental referrals are used with paper cards um, so with the paper referrals 30 to 40 percent never show and why why is it they're too busy they waited too long and the last one's financial um, the other thing that's a problem with the paper referral form is that the actual 70% that do show up, they're a surprise to you guys. You guys don't know that they're coming. And so when they show up to your office and, uh, you know, they come in, you have to sit down with them and actually ask them, what is the problem? What do they want done? And the patients look at the specialist kind of like, you mean my doctor didn't tell you? And, and so they're trying to explain something that's complicated that they don't really understand, such as implants. And uh, anyway, it makes you as a specialist look bad as well when you don't know that they're supposed to be coming in and why they're coming in. There's other methods of referring that are great. And let's go through all of those. They have good points to them, but I want to show out some of the problems that come with them. So the phone call. Uh, I believe that this is the best, the best message, uh, sorry, the best method for initial patient compliance. So you make the phone call right there before the, the patient leaves. That's great because the, you guys know about them, they get them scheduled, and you get a really high compliance rate with that. Here's the problem with phone calls. First of all, um, a lot of the patients that are leaving my office, they don't want to make the appointment right then. They don't know what their schedule's like. They, they need to look over their finances or talk to their husband about it. So uh, they don't want to make the phone call right then. Um, the phone call is really good in the, the initial um, communication to get them into the specialist's office. But continued correspondence, um, the phone call doesn't happen back. You know, we don't get a phone call back unless there's usually a problem from the specialist because they're busy and frankly, we're busy. I don't want to, every time somebody does something for a patient of mine, I don't want a phone call, hey, you know, the root canal's done and it went well. Um, so, so that's the problem with the phone call. Uh, there's no file or x-ray sharing that can be beneficial as well. There's no status updates from the specialist. There's no tracking and follow through. There's no analytics that are there to help you see who's referring to you. And so, so uh, again, it's really good at the initial onset, but other than that, <clears throat> it falls way short. Um, the email. Um, most people are starting to get the idea that free email is not HIPAA compliant. If you're still sending patient information uh, across free email, then you really need to think about that because it's a, it's a problem. And the reason why it's a problem is because the free emails, nothing's ever free. Uh, the people that actually, like, so let's say Gmail. So Google actually scans, they allow third party scans to scan your email and look for keywords to help target things to you. So let's say you, uh, you had something really, really uh, um, personal in these emails and all of a sudden you start getting advertisements for um, some sexually transmitted disease or something, medication or whatever, um, and your wife is looking at this going, what's going on here? So anyway, that's kind of the problem that you can run into with that is that, is that it's not protected. Um, Google Apps Business has an unlimited plan that's HIPAA compliant for $10 a month. Um, the problem with this is 
Uh, as you know, with emails, you end up, it's kind of unorganized. You look through a million different emails to try to find the one for this one patient. Uh, it doesn't include the patient in the process, like Referral Web does, sends information to the patient. Um, there's no tracking, no status updates. So it's, it's just a communication thing. And HIPAA compliant email is great for that one or two cases a month that you really need to communicate with a specialist or the doctor general about a complicated case, but it doesn't provide a system. It doesn't create a system where every single referral that's sent is sent through this HIPAA compliant email. It, it, it just doesn't do that. It only is used on the really serious cases. So therefore you aren't getting notified and you are not capturing every referral sent. Texting uh, is not HIPAA compliant. Um, faxing, uh, that's starting to go, go away. It costs a lot of money to fax. They estimate $20 for each fax uh, cost. I don't know how they get that, but that's, <laughs> that's, what, they, that's what is said out there. Uh, but it's, again, it's, there's no proof of the referral being sent, so you're liable. There's, um, there's no ability to share x-rays. There's no analytics, no patient follow-through, status updates. So the same type of things we have problem with before. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to get to uh, the meat and potatoes of this, which is just uh, referral web, an electronic referral system. And uh, again, the reasons why systems are so important are those reasons I talked about. Predictable results. It works like clockwork even when you're not thinking about it. The goal of Referral Web is to capture every refer referral, help you improve your communication, and have continuity of care for the patient. Let's take an example of, so this is kind of geared towards a specialist right now. Uh, an endodontist can lose up to $648,000 a year just by using paper referral cards, and we'll show you how. So an endodontist, uh, about 85 to 95% of their practice is based solely on referrals. And the average ref uh, endodontist ends up doing about 100 referral uh, root canals per month, um, which means they all came from referrals. So they're getting about 85 referrals a month. And if they are getting and receiving 85 referrals a month, uh, and 30% are actually are not coming through the door, which that 30% not coming in does apply to endodontists. A lot of times endodontists think, hey, you know, I'm, uh, people are in pain, so they're going to be coming in. But uh, the study that I'm going to show you actually, um, one of the endodontists had actually around 35% that didn't actually follow through with their appointments. So if 30% actually aren't coming through, that means they had 127 referred to them, but only 85 showed up. So that's a lot going through the, falling through the cracks. So 36 lost referrals at about $1,500 a piece equals about $54,000 of lost revenue each month. And the doctor, endo, Dr. Endo, doesn't have a clue that these patients exist and he can't even reach out to help bring them in. So Referral Web um, is there to help capture every referral and help Dr. Endo capture those referrals. This tells you a little bit about Referral Web. We uh, provide this little button, an easy button that they click that hooks up to the computer with a USB. Uh, they push this, so the referring doctor, when somebody is getting referred, they come up to the front. The receptionist is checking them out, clicks this button. It brings up the referral form where they can enter in uh, the name, mobile number, and email. Uh, pick the doctor to refer to and write a brief description and send it. And it's really easy to, to do. This is how it works. After the referral has been sent, um, an automatic and immediate text and an email is sent to the patient, letting them know that they've been referred to Dr. Smith. And uh, an email and a text is immediately sent to Dr. Smith and his receptionist saying that, that uh, Johnny was just referred to their, to their office. Because both of them get this information, they can reach out to one another and uh, make sure that this patient comes in. The patient gets uh, instructions on learning more about uh, Dr. Smith, as well as driving directions and anything that's needed. Uh, there's patient reviews. So all the things that might uh, cause some friction with them actually following through, we provide to them in this text and email to make it easier and more comfortable for them to go to a new doctor. A lot of these patients don't like new doctors because they're not comfortable with them. But if they see patients' reviews are positive, if they can see, uh, you know, this is where they, they are and this is a little bio, on, on them and some of their philosophies on taking care of their patients. They're more comfortable making that decision. Okay, I'm going to follow through with this. If they don't, no problem. Mr. Smith's receptionist is on top of it. She can call him and invite him in and be really nice. If there's ever an issue of like, you know what, I don't know if I have the money right now, at least Dr. Smith can address that and say, well, let's have you come in and, and just go over a couple of options. So then the last step is the specialist can actually report back to the referring doctor that Johnny waited in and that uh, process is being made or that the, or that the uh, uh, treatment is complete. And they can also share files uh, th th over that. 
Um, when Dr. Endo invites a general dentist to refer to him using referral web, he becomes the default receiver. So when that general dentist decides to use it for his orthodontist and for everybody because it's so slick and easy and it's free to him, um, he can use it uh, for any type of referral. But anytime he brings that up, Dr. Endo, the person that actually introduced this to them, is their default. So let me introduce this study to you. Three doctors sent over 200 referrals. And uh, the ones using paper referral cards, 59% actually followed through with their referral. Uh, whereas those that used referral web, excuse me, 76% actually followed through. So I cut that in half by 50%. So instead of 41%, um, instead it dropped down to 76, which increased it by 17% um, referrals. And what does that mean? Okay. I was just going to say, I mean, you think about what 17% means. I mean, when you're talking about dollars and cents, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is, that's huge to mm -hmm. every practice when they, when they look at what that, the actual value of that is, and it looks like your next slide kind of goes through that a little bit, but I, yeah. I gotta think there's, there's specialists out there, you know, that are watching this and thinking, oh man, you know, I mean, we're having these little problems, you know, we're, you know, maybe we're, we're you know, we've had a couple of our slow months, we've had a hard time making payroll or, or whatever, and the reality is, um, if they could just capture what's already being sent to them, and increase it by, gosh, even 10%, you know, I, I got to think that would make a, a dramatic difference in their practice. You're absolutely right, Mike. And, and this, this goes through to kind of illustrates how it can impact just these, these doctors that were in, in this study. What we did is we, we just said, okay, on average, uh, not everybody's getting 87 referrals like an endodontist. Uh, you know, an orthodontist may be getting 10 to 15 or a pedodontist, uh, you know, you name it. They're, they're kind of all over. But we just picked just an average number. Uh, let's say 10, 10 referrals a month are coming in. Well, those that didn't use referral web, they had nine come in, but that meant 16 were sent. And so, because they had 41% no show. Right. And if they averaged about $2,000 a referral, which is a, probably a pretty good average, you got $5,000 per ortho case and around $1,500 or so for an endo case. But around $2,000 per referral, you know, that's $18,000 that, uh, that they brought in from those referrals. And uh, over here, these same 16 referrals that were sent, they actually captured three more of those patients. Right. So that ends up being uh, 6,000 more a month and it made a difference of $72,000 at the end of the year mm -hmm. just by using referral web instead of paper cards. And that's, that's without extra advertising or yeah. or anything. That's just, again, that's the thing that I love is is you're just capturing what's already being sent to you. Yeah. You know, you're just putting yourself in the way of the people that, that are already going down the funnel. You just have to be there to, to capture them. Yeah. Well, and the cool thing is, too, is it's not like you're asking the general dentist to do something that's going to be hard for them. This actually ends up being making their job easier. It's better mm -hmm. for them because they get status updates. They get all the benefits that come through that, and it's free for them. Yeah. And so when, when a specialist goes and asks their general dentist to do this, and they're providing the service to them for free, uh, the general dentist is, is grateful. In fact, we did a survey where we asked 100 general dentists if they're satisfied with the way the referrals were being sent. And we had 90, I think it was 90% of them, that said they, they were not satisfied, they knew it was broken, and they would, if a specialist asked them to improve and give them a free system to do it, that they would do it mm -hmm. uh, without even hesitation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we found so far also mm -hmm. with the, the specialists that have uh, introduced this to their, their mm -hmm. general dentist. In fact, um, we just had a specialist uh, sign up that uh, brought on 45 general dentists within a month and uh, they're all loving it, sending referrals through it, and really enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. And so he's actually increasing his, his bottom line by doing that. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, this is kind of goes through the, the step one, is uh, the office manager sends out an electronic re invitation to the general dentist. Usually a phone call is made first saying, you know what, we're gonna be, uh, we, we really value our relationship and we wanna treat your patients really good. And we're going to provide this this uh, awesome new way to refer for no cost to you guys. I'm going to send you a link that you can follow with a video that can kind of explain it for, to you. And uh, you just follow this, and we'll bring by a button. Um, not everybody uses buttons. You can just get to it on a browser um, there on on uh, Google or whatever. Um, so so let's get to the cost. Basically, it's $199 a month. Um, and it's that's for the specialist. That's for the specialist, okay. and they can give it to unlimited amount of general dentists that they want to refer, okay. use the system for. 
Um, we are doing a limit, uh, limited time offer. Well, I shouldn't say limited time. Uh, basically, if you see this this demo, just let us know, and uh, we'll be able to bring that down to 150 a month. So basically what this is is the cost of, if you only bring in one extra referral the entire year, it pays for your service. Um, so it's, if you think about all the people that actually will end up coming into your office that you didn't even have a clue existed before, you're providing the service to the, the, to the referring doctors and uh, improving the communication, file sharing, all the stuff that you get from it. If you only bring in one extra patient that whole year, it'll yeah. pay for the service. Well, and when you consider that, you know, most, most practices are spending that on post-it notes and pens and, yeah. you know, things like that, they're all very important. But when you're really talking about the meat and potatoes of bringing in new business to your practice, this is something that's a direct relation to doing that. Yeah, I mean, if you think about what what is your phone book ads actually right. helping your practice? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Right. And you're well, paying you're a couple hundred. You're the perfect case study, right? I yeah. mean, you looked at your phone book ads and and ran the numbers, and I think most dental professionals out there are having those same internal conversations of evaluating their their advertising avenues and really finding out what the return is on mm -hmm. those those investments. And so again, something like this uh, that can they can so easily pay for itself, it seems to be a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, we certainly think so. Um, me personally, I just, what, what's pretty neat is when we actually create a software and every time I get a text or an email saying, thanks for the referral, or I just saw your patient, and this is the issues, and the mm -hmm. communication is so great, it's great to get those warm fuzzies inside going, you know what? This is awesome. We created something really, really good that will benefit people, that yeah. will improve their bottom line and bringing right. in more revenue and also make the experience better for the yeah. general dentist, for the patient, and for everybody. Yeah. So just in, in uh, conclusion, you know, it improves the communication. It, it helps you capture every referral of the specialist. And the continuity of care, allowing the patient to be transferred effectively between the doctors is really important. So this uh, goes over the dental referral form, just to give you an idea. Uh, you really simply put this information in, put in their uh, insurance, and it will actually, when you put in an ortho, it does a search around your area, and it will bring up all of the orthodontists that, that are on the system that uh, in the green actually shows the ones that accept that. The yellow, or we're not sure if they accept the insurance, they haven't put it in, or red means they do not accept the insurance. So you're helping the patient uh, get to the right place. You don't want to send them to somebody and then have them go and have the whole consultation and then find out, hey, I, I don't even accept your insurance. Yeah. Patients get really frustrated with that. We have a, a dynamic tooth chart here where you click the teeth. Um, the specialist can actually change these right here, these little hot buttons to make it easy to just click on this and it automatically fills in the notes. You can ups, upload your files and then send it or save it as a draft if you need to come back to it later. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like if you clicked on some things and and then sent it. What ends up happening is you get those automatic emails and texts uh, to both the patient and also the specialist that uh, bring them to this dashboard where they can look and see, okay, uh, this green one has not been opened yet. Um, and it also tells the status. So the general dentist can know if you've actually viewed that or not. And if you viewed it, it shows viewed, but you just haven't put in whether or not they've actually uh, set up an appointment or not. And you can click on that and it'll bring you to the patient's file that tells you the information, shows you the picture. And then you can actually send back, um, send back some information to them. So that helps people know that, uh, that you care about their patients by using Referral Web. It also has patient reviews. Uh, like we said, allows the patient 24 hours after they receive the, the treatment from the specialist, it uh, sends them a text asking them for a, a review of that specialist. So as a general dentist, I get to know whether or not my specialist I'm referring mm -hmm. to is treating my patients good. 95% yeah. uh, of the patients that we've sent through referral web prefer referral web over paper referral cards. So we really are treating the patients better by using the system. Uh, we're communicating better. Uh, you're at the top of their mind because every time they send a referral, no matter who they send it to, if you're the one inviting them to this, you're going to be the default right. referring doctor. Um, like I said, the general dentists that have been asked if they would do this, if a specialist asked them, uh, they said that they would. And we've had tremendous success from the specialists that, that have introduced this to their general dentist. And of course, capturing a referral, that's what Referral Web does. So, um, you know, doing the small things, including Referral Web, will make a big difference in your practice. Uh, so this, that's my uh, presentation on referrals. If you have any other questions or concerns or would like to follow up with Referral Web, uh, go ahead and give us a call. And uh, we'd be glad to 
to talk to yeah, you more so, about it. So probably a great way for them to do that would be to go to referralweb.com. Yeah. The, the information's there to, to contact them. You know, I really like, and from our perspective, um, technology is really has two purposes. One, to increase the convenience of all of our life, right? But secondly, to, to gain a competitive edge. And I think Referral Web really hits on both of those topics really, really well and fits in really well with the mission of the Dental Technology Association in that providing tools that increase convenience and increase your competitive edge. So I want to thank Dr. Rob uh, yeah. for joining us today for uh, for this video cast and we're really grateful for the time that he spent and and number one educate us on referrals and their importance but also showing us you know not just the problem but also a solution to solve the problem. So until next time we'll see you at the Dental Technology Association. This is Mike Green and we'll see you next time. All right thanks.